to iPhone. Tom Dixon is a marketing genius. He sells his industrial strength blenders by filming them as they grind up the known world. But how does a blender really blend? What goes on inside the blades? To show us, we asked Tom to start with the easy stuff. Let's blend a couple of strawberries. Sounds good to me. That smells and looks pretty good. It does. You get all that? Got it. Now, this is not going to end well for the strawberry. No, strawberries are... Our cameras capture the strawberry's demise at 10,000 frames per second. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's a slicer oh, and a dicer. Oh, slices. That's four, five. That's great. Six. And there's the other one. And, oh, this is fun. <laughs> We know you've always asked yourself one burning question. Why, no matter what speed you run a blender, does some stuff just refuse to go down and get ground? The problem is they run the blade too fast. Everything bounces off or doesn't pull the product down into the blade. So what happens if we try something at lower speed? Let's try low speed. <laughs> Gumball smoke. Ready? Oh. Let's see about what theory looks like in reality. Oh. Okay, so how fast is this living? This is 10,000 frames per second right there. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> when the blender runs at maximum speed, the blade bounces the gumballs upward rather than letting them fall into the cutting path. Easy to see at 10,000 frames per second. We take a good look at the slower one, the slower speed. Slower blade speed. Here so we now we can really see a comparison. Well, first hit. Uh. <laughs> that was perfect. A little bit different. That's why we have program cycles. Yep. Let's everything drop down in front of the blade. It's not only the variable speed, but the single blade design that enhances blending performance. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, wait till our engineers see this. This blade can spin at 28,000 revolutions per minute, meaning almost anything is at our mercy. <laughs> okay, pop quiz. This is what's hey, left of what we just blended. Any it's guesses? Really hot, actually. That's not too surprising. Time's up. Let's reverse the shot to find out. You know, it's really a little uncomfortable being put inside a blender. All right. We've seen Tom's blender pulverize this camera, crack gumballs, and slice strawberries. But can it blend up a Molotov cocktail? Now, you've done this before. Oh, no. Just to recap, we're going to take seven containers of highly pressurized flammable gas, and we're going to blend them and hope that it explodes. That's right. Now, why are we going to do this? It's never been done before. We're the first. I'm convinced. It's a great reason. Safety but there's a bigger question here. Will the blender container survive? And yes, this experiment defines the phrase, don't try this at home. I'm all set. And we right. do mean you. Three, two, one. Yes! <laughs> Take a look. Can't wait. Lift off. Wow, so it comes right out of the bottom. <laughs> oh, man. This is totally awesome. Our slow motion footage reveals that the fire starts underneath as the escaping fuel hits hot metal in the motor. There was a ton of butane spurting out the top, and it really takes that flame way up. Wow. <laughs> Let's just see the, the right the beginning of the flame again. I'm glad we moved back because that, that's going three feet off the table. Oh, yeah. Inside. <laughs> Seven exploding lighters would bust most blenders apart, but this one is made of the same material used for bulletproof glass. In the background underneath there, the blender is still blending away. Still blending away. Look at oh, man. Juggling has been around since ancient Egypt. And over the past 4,000 years, nearly anything that can be held in the hand can be tossed in the air. Just ask Mad Chad Taylor. The 
guy famous for juggling buzzing chainsaws. How does he do it without losing life, or best case, limb? And more importantly, for those of us playing at home, how can we do it? Oh, I had that. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get it. Let's start with the basics. This is called the cascade, which is generally thought of as the most basic juggling pattern. All right, what's a little step above that? Uh, a little, okay, what well, would be a little more difficult, this is called the shower. All right, that looks quite a bit more difficult. Well, it is roughly twice as fast because only one hand is throwing them up high. Looks hard, right? When we warp it down, hey, it looks easy. After a few strategic beers, anyone could do this. And we captured this at 500 frames a second? Yep. All right, it's about 20 times slower than normal. Wow, that's pretty cool. To Makes see. it look easy. Right off the bat, we noticed something interesting. Your gaze never changes over the entire sequence. And, and that's good. I mean, the idea is you're trying to keep looking to get that same imaginary point in space and seeing everything else with your purple vision. So that's good. I'm doing that. It's, it's interesting. You're never looking down at your hands. You never have to look at your hands. Once you've seen the highest point, you know where it's going to land. Let's take this step by step. Ball leaves hand. Hand catches ball. Repeat, rinse. Again, watch Chad's eyes. Looks easy this slow, but at normal speed, time for another beer and another juggling pattern. Let's compare this to the shower juggle, okay? That's the classic way to juggle. Now, in the cascade, usually there's only one ball in the air at a time, sometimes two. When you get into the shower, there's actually moments when all three are in the air. Gravity dictates the more objects Chad has in the air, the higher he has to throw them. I'll do my three. Okay. I'd keep your eyes on the guy on the right. All right, hit it. In this case, with seven balls thrown roughly 10 feet above his hands, there's a lot more room for error. To get it right, Chad has to keep up to six balls in the air at any given time. Not an easy thing to do. I can, oh, I can just see all my mistakes, how sloppy that is. They should be the same height there, they're not. There's a couple moments where you can actually see some of the balls on top hit each other really, really lightly. Okay, I didn't even catch that. I'm just surprised yep. that that is so much right lower. There. Wow. Okay, Chad is making this look too easy. Let's up the ante and give him more to play with. Each one is going to go up in a double spin. Balls can be caught any old way. But when you're juggling oblong items like bats, you have to spin them precisely to grab the handle. At warp speed, this becomes a beautiful ballet. You must not be able to see anything below your neck. So no, you really yeah, have to no judge way. this way in advance. Yeah, yeah, I have to be looking right up there where they're peeking to uh, make it work for sure. Okay, Chad's got the three ball thing down. He's even got seven balls going. And he's got the bats happening. But why does he not quit when he's ahead? What would possess a man to juggle chainsaws? Well... Like so many foolhardy decisions, it all started with a paycheck. It was actually for a beer commercial, and I had two weeks to learn it. And, and the thing is, and then I got there to shoot it, and I'm firing him up, and the director's like, you don't have to start him. He says, we'll just put a sound effect over later. Well, Time Warp doesn't do sound effects. Here we go, guys. Teeth are 
spinning at 11,500 RPM. Replace ice chips for human flesh, and you understand why we looked at the fine print of the Time Warp insurance policy. The good news is the only thing our plan does cover is accidental dismemberment from onset chainsaw juggling. So, we're good to go. Chad Taylor is a world-class juggler. When he gets warped in front of our cameras, it makes the ordinary extraordinary. And transforms the truly difficult into poetry in motion. Now, it's time to turn our cameras on something completely insane as Chad prepares to juggle three running chainsaws. Okay, well, this is why we're actually really here. Okay, <laughs> if you guys are ready. Give you a little towel just in case. Ignore him. Okay. Keep focused, we're gonna just stay out of the way and let this happen. <laughs> This is the part where we say, don't try this at home. Research suggests the people who learn to juggle have a 3% increase in gray matter. Their brains actually grow. If so, assuming we ignore Chad's decision to juggle chainsaws, he must be a genius. Whether lightweight bats or 10-pound chainsaws, Chad's technique doesn't vary. Only the danger does. It seems like right when the ones in your left hand are coming down, it really, really puts an impact on uh, your yeah, wrist. It's I huge. I can't believe that, how well you can see that there. Wow. I mean, I always knew they were heavy, but it's really wild to see that. Somehow, this looks even more dangerous at 2,000 frames per second. If the spin isn't correct, Chad will miss the handle. But these aren't harmless bats. These have sharp, moving teeth. See a move? Even here, Chad is still not looking in his hands. By the time Chad ends his performance, 27 running chainsaws have passed within inches of his nose. Let's watch that again. Now, thanks to this warped footage, the secret of juggling is revealed. Notice Chad is looking straight ahead, never looking at his hands. He is in a zone of total concentration, total awareness, with his peripheral vision fully engaged with all of his senses, keeping, well, all of his balls in the air at the same time. talked about the increase in gray matter earlier from jugglers. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about doing this in terms of how smart it was in the beginning, but now that you got it working, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, well, the chainsaw juggling may actually decrease gray matter. I'm not sure yet. And decrease everything if it cuts the wrong place. So what have we learned? Three balls, easy. More balls, getting harder. Those pins, getting lost. Chainsaw, we'd like another beer. seen that there's a science to everything. This is awesome. We have to get this guy in here. From blending gumballs to juggling a chainsaw. And not too unexpectedly, there's also a science to this simple barroom trick. Check this out. Holy moly. <laughs> I want to try. All right. All right, what Step do I have in. to keep in mind? Well, I would dump a little bit out, get some air in the top. Uh, for the homies. Yep. Always. And then you want to hit it with the padded part of your hand as level as you can, covering the entire rim. Right here. Yep. That's it. 
And now, the obligatory don't try this at home reference. Uh, did I, I heard something. Yeah. You gotta hit it harder than my crazy Auntie Grace. I'll, I'll try. Ready? Go ahead. Yep. Nicely yeah. done. Very nice. Let's watch that again. With this warp, we see the secret behind a bartender's least favorite trick. Or do we? So that's the moment of impact right there. Oh, and it's ten frames later than it breaks. It looks like a bunch of little bubbles forming. Yeah, we need to look at that a lot, a lot slower. Because I'm pretty sure those aren't bubbles. Okay. So let's zoom in and go a lot faster. As fast as possible. Let's do it. Ready to go. And by faster, of course, Jeff means slower. Right. You're all set? Yep. Set me yeah, up, boys. Go. Three, two, one. That was pretty easy. It was easy. So that's amazing. <laughs> so it's a cavitation. A cavitation is, is just like a bubble, but it's a bubble of a vacuum. Warped at 10,000 frames per second, we can actually see the vacuum form on the bottom. Nature just abhors vacuums. And when nature doesn't like something, it usually does something dramatic. It's the sheer force of the liquid just rushing back to fill the vacuum, and it just blasts out the bottom. The break is actually happening because the water is separated from the bottom and drawn back to it at a really, really high velocity. Amazing. Okay, we have a small confession. What we've been showing you so far has all been done with colored water. Not because we don't like beer, but because this party trick is nearly impossible okay. with carbonated okay, let's liquids. See. Let's do a beer. Real beer. That real said, beer. Okay. let's go for the real thing. Get out of my seat. <laughs> well, sometimes I want to be in your seat. <laughs> so, as we expect, there's almost no cavitation. There's small cavities, and then the carbon dioxide fills it immediately, forms a ton of